announced this week that they were extending their partnership with the Ladies Gaelic Football Association by another four years. That will mean a decade of partnership in one of the most successful sponsorships in Irish sport over that period of time. It will mean the investment of an additional five million over those four years as well, helping to transform the league in so many ways. We travelled to Newbridge and the Lidl Distribution Centre to catch up with players Carla Rowe and Monica McGurk, who faced each other in last year's TG Cahar All-Ireland uh, Ladies Football Final and will do so again in a couple of weeks' time in the league. And also we met with Joe Mooney, the sponsorship manager at Lidl. First of all, we asked him how long this extension had been in the planning. We've been discussing it with our, with our good friends in the LGFA for the last few months and since towards the end of last year about getting a, getting another renewal in, in the books and uh, t- thankfully anyway they're on, on the same page as us in terms of wanting to really double redouble our efforts and, and look at even a longer contract than we've had over the first two contracts so far so yeah we're delighted to be able to finally uh, let the cat out of the bag today as it, as it is and, and have some of the ambassadors and other, other players in, uh, involved to be here in Newbridge today to, to make the big announcement. It's been one of the most successful partnerships over the last six years, clearly. Um, has it been challenging in some ways to keep it fresh, to keep it at that same level? I know we had the, the new advertisements that came out on the side of the mountain, which doubled down on the previous one, which was such a success as well. But how much of a challenge is it to just keep that imagination going? Yeah, look, it can be difficult. I think anyone involved in sponsorship over over the longer term can, can find that you might be hitting that brick wall now and again for new ideas. But like, thankfully, I think things are changing and evolving in, in Lidl all the time. We've been able to utilise our Lidl Plus Rewards app over the last year or two now um, to, to be able to invest in local clubs and the grassroots level and give give the LGFA members a chance to sort of earn rewards for their own clubs in their own local area. So that, that's been an opportunity that we've been able to capitalise on. And yeah, I suppose the, the creative side of it can be difficult at the best of times, but thankfully we've, uh, we've great colleagues in the LGFA and great colleagues internally in Lidl and, and those and a few agencies and that that always keep the, keep the ideas going. And it's just a case of trying to, trying to pick the best ones out and bringing them to life. The growth of the sport over the time that you've been involved has been outstanding, better than any other sport in the in the country in terms of numbers, in terms of participation, in terms of the momentum and the sentiment around it. Do you feel that you know the customers, that you know the players a lot better now at the end of six years? And how is that going to shape the next four? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you have to be learning all the time, but I suppose even some of the stuff we would have learned over the first initial period is nearly forgotten at this stage because you'd have to evolve over the last three years again. So, yeah, I suppose it's, it's constant trying to keep those relationships built up. And I suppose over this time, we've worked with so many different players, and some of them have gone on to Australia, some of them have retired at this stage. There's other younger players coming through all the time. So, it's just trying to keep that keep that fresh. But as I said, again, like working with, with, with an organisation like the LGFA, they're, they're great to work with, and the players are really keen to be involved in promoting the game and really want to be those role models for the, for the younger players coming through so look, it makes my life a lot easier to be honest. And you've not been afraid to put a number on it either so you're, you're actually increasing the level of investment. It was five million over the last six years that's gone into the, uh, the partnership and it's going to be another five million now over the next four years. Where do you think is the, the real benefit of that going to be felt across the sport? Yeah, well, it's something I just touched on there previously is the the LGFA st- or the Little Plus stamp card reward scheme that we've been running. I think is an area that that's really brought the sponsorship to a new level and really kind of increased the engagement between the, the your person on the ground in their local community and their club and, and what the what a sponsorship for like our, like ours actually means for them and how we can really provide value to those those people in their local areas and not just maybe where they see the national football leagues or the, the big days in Crow Park. It's really about being able to give back to the, the local areas, the underage teams, the volunteers, everyone else involved in those clubs. And I think that, that's one area now that we have this reward scheme running it is going to provide a huge amount more investment for, for local areas and individual clubs as opposed to the, the association as a whole. Yeah, national is, is great, but local is even greater. And I know from experience the number of clubs and schools that have got Lidl emblazoned on the kit. Has it been has it been really good for the business in terms of you know sort of solidifying a, a, a long term presence here in Ireland? But it was the first time that you'd really got involved in sport, first time that you'd really sort of got involved deep in the communities. Has it been a, a, a winner as much as you would have expected? Uh, well, thankfully, I think so. Yeah, I think look, everyone in the business and, and hopefully the LGFA are, are really proud of everything we've managed to achieve over those years. But just in general, I mean, the sport itself has, has seen such a grand swell of support over the last maybe over a decade. And that, like, we can't claim credit for everything because there's been great work going on and other sponsors involved. But 100%, I think I think everyone's really 
really pleased with how things have gone over the initial six years. We've obviously got another four years to come now, but yeah, just continuing to, to work with the players and evolving the sponsors and make people proud of it, I suppose. And like at the end of the day, we, we really do want the people on the ground, uh, whether they're in the association, whether they play, whether they have daughters playing, whoever it is, we want them to be able to really see value from the sponsorship and not just seeing an on on TV, which is a big part of it, but to really been able to make those connections and the, particularly the emotional connection with people around the country is huge and, and hopefully they're, they're seeing that as well because we certainly are on our on our side. Delighted to be joined by Carla Rowe from Dublin and Monica McGurk from Meath, two rivals on the field of play last year, including in that memorable All-Ireland final. Um, nice to see you both together here again now at the moment. How have things been over the course of the winter? How are you set fair for the league season kicking off this weekend? Uh, yeah, well I suppose uh, for us, uh, Carla, know quite a lot of it. It's been a whirlwind um, couple of couple of months, you know, after winning in All Ireland, it's been absolutely fantastic. The buzz around the county has been absolutely brilliant, you know. But um, just we're focusing now for twenty twenty two, you know, um, a lot of um, people kind of forget we we've coming up from Division Two football, you know. So Division One football is going to be a brand new challenge for us, and obviously we're, we're up there with the top teams in the country, the likes of Dublin and Cork and Waterford and. To get out of that group is going to be massive for us, so it's going to be a, a tough, a t tough Division One um, first round. So, but no, we're looking forward to it, and we're looking forward to the challenge ahead. And the level of expectation internally is probably the same now as it was last year, but externally, yeah. there's an awful lot more is going to be thought of yeah. what you're capable of achieving now in both the league yeah. and again in the championship. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like I suppose last year, the mentality was, you know, we were just taking one game as it as it got as it comes, and you know, um, seeing how we get on. Like we weren't thinking of an All Ireland final round; we were just taking one game as, as it comes. And I suppose going into the final, we knew we kind of had nothing to lose in, in that aspect, you know, and we knew we were going in against a tough Dublin Dublin side, so. Um, this year the mentality is very different. You know, there's a lot of questions. You know, in terms of can they do it again? Was it a one-hit wonder? You know, we're not thinking that far to the championship. Like I, I'm sure it's the same for Dublin. The focus is just Division One football at the moment, and um, that that's all our minds are focused on for now, and seeing how far we can do on that. And the league has come. It, it's really grown in terms of importance and in terms of presence as well. Um, there's, a, there's a new streaming platform now, so that we're going to be seeing games live on TG Cahill, but you'll be able to watch every minute of it as well. How do you feel, Carla, that the game has developed over the last number of years? Because Dublin had that wonderful you know, run of, of All-Ireland titles coming off the back of Cork. Now it's getting wider. Now there are more teams that are competitive in there. Is that a good thing for the sport? Oh, yes, yeah, 100%. Uh, it's fantastic for the sport to have... Like the more competitive games you have, the, the more eyes you're going to get watching and get interested in it and the sport's going to grow as we've seen over the last couple of years. And for us uh, and any other teams out there, all you want is those kind of championship matches as early as you can get it in a season. If that, if that happens in January or February in the league, it's fantastic. You want, you want to be playing at the highest level you can for as many matches in a year as you can. And what are the memories like from that day in Croke Park when we came along and took away the prize from you. I guess there's been plenty spoken about in the uh, on the training pitch and in the dressing room since. Uh, memories are a bit of a blur. <laughs> uh, no, look, you, you, it's it's unfortunate for us, but as I said, like we know the feeling of of winning, and we know that it's it's nice for another team to be able to experience that. It's a pity we were on the receiving end of it, but um, look, you you use it, you 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 use it, you learn from it, you grow, and you pack it aside. And it depends what kind of person you are. For me personally you pack that little bit of hurt away somewhere on those days where you need an extra bit of motivation and I'll make sure to use that to, to spur us forward for this year.